In this session, we'll look at a technique that allows us to do a virtual walkthrough of a Civil 3D design. As you can see, I'm in Civil 3D. On my screen, I have a drawing that represents a simple plat of survey. My goal in this session is to be able to visit this site and walk around this site. And while I'm walking around, I want to see a marker that shows my physical location in the CAD file. To do that, I'm going to use a combination of Civil 3D, A360 Drive, and the Google Earth mobile app. Let's take a look. First of all, let me mention that this drawing is geospatially located. To prove that, I'm going to come over to the Settings tab here in the tool space. I'll right-click on the drawing name, and I'll choose Edit Drawing Settings. Right here, we can see the state plane coordinate system that's being used. Let's close this. Since this drawing is geospatially located, I can jump over to the Geolocation tab, and I can test this by opening the Map menu, and I'll choose Map Aerial. This will show me the aerial photography, or the Bing maps, in the background. As you can see, everything lines up very well. Once again, I'll open this and I'll turn the map off. The first step in the workflow is to export this drawing to KMZ. I'll do that by coming over and selecting the Toolbox tab. And then I'll expand Miscellaneous Utilities. I'll open up Export KML. And then I'll double-click to launch the Export tool. Now I know that says KML, just bear with me for a second. Here I'll give my KMZ file a name. I can also give it an optional description and hyperlink. We're going to stick with my default setting of plat-gps. Let's click Next. Here I can select the objects I'd like to export. I'm going to Export Selected Objects. I'll click this button to make my selection. Let's back up. Basically, I'm going to export everything except for that existing surface. No reason to export that. Let me press Enter. Right here, I can select additional items to export if I want. I'm just going to keep the defaults here. Let me click Next. I'd like to export this file using the coordinate system that's assigned to the drawing. Let's click Next. No fine-tuning is necessary. I would, however, like to drape the objects on the ground. I do this because if I were exporting a proposed design and it had elevations, it may appear underneath the surface that's being used by Google Earth. Let's click Next. Let me click the Ellipsis button. I'm going to save this in my Exercise Files folder, and right here in the Save As Type, this is where I can select KMZ. Once again, we're going to go with the name Plat-GPS. I'll click Save. I will then click Export, and then to review the data that I've exported, I'll click the View button. This will open the KMZ file in Google Earth. Now that the file's open, let's roll the mouse wheel forward, we'll zoom in, I'll hold the wheel down and we'll square this up a little bit. And then I'll click the north arrow just to true that up. So here we can see the geometry translated well, it's lining up perfectly. Once I've reviewed the conversion, I can close Google Earth. I'm going to discard any changes. What I'd like to do now is take that KMZ file that we just made, and I'd like to upload that to my A360 Drive account. This way the file will be available on the cloud. I'll do that by bringing up my web browser. From here, I'll visit 360.autodesk.com. I will then use the Sign In button to log into my account. If you do not have an account, you can always sign up for one. They are free of charge. Let's choose Sign In, and I'll enter my credentials. Once I'm logged in, I can see the directory structure that I've created to this point. I'd like to create a new folder. I'll do that by clicking the New Folder button, and I'll call this GPS Test, and I'll press Enter. Once the folder's been created, I'll double-click to jump in, and then I can upload my KMZ file. I can do that by clicking the Upload button, or I can do it via drag-and-drop. Let's do it that way. We'll do that by bringing up Windows Explorer, and then I'll navigate into the Exercise Files folder, and then we'll drag and drop the KMZ into A360 Drive. Now that I've uploaded this file to the cloud, I'm going to leverage it using my mobile device. I'll start by closing my browser, and we'll close Windows Explorer, and then we'll jump over to the iPad. On the iPad, I will tap to open the A360 mobile app. When this comes up, I'll tap to access the A360 Drive, that's the folder in the upper left corner. I will then tap to open the GPS test folder. And when I can see the KMZ file, I'm going to tap the small i in the lower right corner. In the pop-up menu, I will tap Open In, and then I'll tap Copy to Google Earth, because I've got the Google Earth mobile app loaded on this iPad. When the file comes up, I'm going to pinch outward to zoom in. We'll get a little bit closer to this. And if you look at the top of the screen, you can see an N icon. If I tap that, it will true up the view on screen. The triangular button to the right is what I'll use to identify my physical location. 
Now before I push that button, if you'll indulge me for just a second, I'm going to adjust the screen display slightly to make it easier to demonstrate the virtual walkthrough. When I tap the location button, Google Earth will place a marker that corresponds to my physical location. As you can see, I'm currently just south of the house, standing on the back deck. What I'd like to do is walk around the yard, so we can see how well the GPS marker follows my position. Now to keep things fair, as I walk I'll be holding a small camcorder, so we can compare the virtual marker position to where I'm actually standing in the physical world. So, let's walk out into the yard. What I'd like to do first is walk over to the southwest property corner. As I do this, we'll make the assumption that this is a vacant lot. Obviously we can see this lot isn't vacant, there's a fence and some buildings on this property. We can use these items though to verify the accuracy of our physical location with the CAD drawing displayed in Google Earth. As I approach the corner of the lot, we can see the marker moving toward that location. And just when I get to the corner, we can see the marker is in approximately the same spot. I will then turn around. Next, we'll start walking north along the fence line. Let me mention that I'm not using anything fancy with respect to hardware in this case. I'm working with a three-year-old iPad, and I'm connected via Wi-Fi to a 4G wireless card. That being said, there are many factors that can affect the accuracy of location, so there's always a chance that your user experience may be different than mine. I'm going to walk up to the base of this tree. As I get right up to the trunk, we can see the marker is doing a really good job matching my location. I will then proceed to a fire hydrant that is located on the northwest corner of the lot. To make the trip a little faster, I'm going to increase the playback speed. Notice as I move northward, the marker strays outside the property line. This may have been caused by the tree cover or the close proximity of the buildings. You can also see the complexity of opening a wooden gate while both hands are being used to hold an iPad and a camcorder. Once I get through the gate and continue northward, we will switch back to a normal playback speed. As you can see, I'm approaching the hydrant. Just imagine if this represented a proposed utility in our CAD drawing. Using this technology, we have the ability to visit a project site and do a virtual walkthrough of an infrastructure design before any ground has even been broken. Now, as I get up to the hydrant here, you can see the accuracy of the location in the CAD drawing. Now, in this example, I'm working with a drawing that represents a single family lot. This workflow could easily be scaled up, such that we could do a walkthrough of an entire subdivision, or a proposed commercial site, or maybe a roadway improvement project. Next, I will continue across the front of the yard, and as I work my way over here, I will approach a small tree in about the middle of the front yard, and when I do, we can see the markers doing a great job keeping up with my location. Finally, we'll do one more. I'm going to head southeast until I get to the corner of the neighbor's fence. As I approach this, we can do a quick review of the workflow. You'll start by exporting your Civil 3D drawing to KMZ. Once you have the KMZ file, you'll upload it to an A360 Drive account. From there, use the A360 mobile app to open the file using Google Earth. And now that I'm at the fence corner, we can see that my physical location is virtually identical to the corresponding location in the CAD drawing. If you get a chance, try experimenting with this workflow. This approach may be the perfect way for you to take a virtual walkthrough of your next design. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.